look at a commercial rooftop unit, I've got to deliver a hot surface igniter because the technician just called and said that the distributor sent the hot surface igniter, but it was broken upon delivery. So we got to go give him a new hot surface igniter so he can get this unit running. I'm going to show you guys how to check hot surface igniter, talk a little bit about it, talk about this rooftop package unit. If you want to learn more about commercial rooftop packages, then check out this video. And if you want more videos, check out my playlist, Tips for Technicians. I'm making content to answer your question, guys, and I really appreciate the questions. Um, all my subscribers, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and get on this roof. But before we do that, let's subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Jadoosh. All right, let's go. There you are, buddy. There you are. Got the new hot surface igniter. We're gonna rock and roll up the side of this roof and uh, check out the unit. Oh man, I can't wait for summertime. Then we'll have lots of friends here to celebrate with us while we do our part changes. Hey Corbin. All right, so this is a commercial rooftop package. What ton is this? Um, can't remember, Got two circuits. Circuit number one, compressor. And then circuit number two, it looks like, five yeah, five ton. It's a five ton? It can't be five ton. There's no way it's five ton. Uh, one, 150, That's, uh, it's 150, it's 12 and a half. 12 and a half. So 150, YCD 150 is a 12 and a half ton and it is a 2009. Wow. You know, I remember installing this in 2009. Really? Yeah, I remember this, man, clear as day. Um, I think William was here with, with, for this install. And this is the oldest rooftop here on Wendy's. And that right there is one that we've most recently installed. That is a York. And this right here is American Standard. Today we're replacing hot surface igniter. And uh, you want to be really careful. Where's the other hot surface igniter? What's this, it look like? This is the one that I pulled out. Is that the original? That's the original that I pulled out. Oh, man. So is this the problem that you found was that it was busted? Yeah, um, we, it, was not, it wasn't igniting, uh, which lead me, led me to checking the hot surface igniter. I was getting voltage at the hot surface igniter. 120 volts? Yes. Uh, nice. Where does it get installed at? Oh, okay. It's got a little clip that holds it in. Nice. This is beautiful. So, definitely when you replace a hot surface igniter, be very careful when you put it in because it can easily be damaged. This is the new one. That is beautiful, man. Beautiful. You want to check and make sure that it has voltage at the plug leading to the hot surface igniter if it has 120 volts and you don't see it glowing then this is an indication that it could be bad two different types of igniters here it's very important that you know how to test these igniters and the difference between the two igniters this is an igniter and it works off of 80 volts it's called a nitride uh, igniter it's called a silicone nitride hot surface igniter and it's very durable it's harder to break than this right here which is a silicone carbide igniter uh, we're going to test this reading ohms on these two wires here we're going to plug our meter leads into this hot surface igniter and read the resistance now a hot surface igniter acts just like an incandescent light bulb filament uh, electrically it's very similar Electricity passes through the hot surface igniter and it glows. If it has more than 120 volts for this igniter, then it could cause it to wear or fail or it could cause it to burn out or break. And if it has lower than 120 volts, then it could cause it not to glow because that's the purpose of this. It glows red hot, gas passes across it, and then it ignites. Uh, this is a silicone carbide igniter. And this is what we're having to replace today uh, let's take a look at the resistance readings right now using a meter. Now, I've got my meter right here set to ohms. You can see right here my meter is set to ohms, okay? And I'm going to read the resistance right now, okay? 
We're going to take our meter leads, and what we should have is we should have in between 40 and 90. Okay, 40 and 90 ohms is what we should read on the silicone carbide igniter. And what I've got right there, you can see, is 91. Uh, so if my resistance is uh, pretty far off from in between 40 and 90, it could be that you have an igniter that's failing. Now on this uh, nitride um, hot surface igniter, we're going to have a little bit lower resistance readings. And usually you want around 30, but this one's probably going to be around 15 or 20. Um, you need to make sure that you understand what voltage you need to apply to each igniter. This is an 80 volt igniter, and this one right here is 120 volts, okay? I uh, just wanted to give you that so you guys understand more uh, in the field about what you're supposed to do when you have these igniters. Now, most commonly, they just break. These igniters usually last around seven uh, to eight years and that's the life expectancy of an igniter and they usually just break and when you find these igniters you'll test if you have voltage to the igniter and it's not glowing it's likely you have a bad igniter okay if you don't have voltage to the igniter you need to check your voltage inputs you need to check your source whether it's a control board or a relay okay all right so we're going to check voltage to the hot surface igniter now we have 112 volts it's very critical that you check the voltage that is feeding the hot surface igniter because if it's an improper voltage for what that igniter is rated for then that could be the cause of the igniter going out set this here oh wow that inducer motor didn't sound very good starting up did you hear that oh wow okay so we may need to replace the inducer motor so since the age of the equipment is past 10 years i want to go ahead and take off the panel so i can see the heat exchanger now we can see the heat exchanger and it is pretty rusted however there's no cracks that I can see so I think that we don't have to get a price on the heat exchanger right now or look at maybe doing a new rooftop package you can also access the back side of the blower housing so you can look at the bearings make sure that you have good rubber bushings that uh, still are in good shape sometimes you'll hear some squealing and it could be because one of your bearings has failed right uh, here's the filters and your evaporator coil and let's go around and take a look at the other side maybe corbin's got that inducer assembly off there see there we got circuit number one and then circuit number two here we have replaced the pulley there uh, because it was wobbling and uh, this adjustable pulley has been replaced adjustable sheave Got the inducer assembly loose. Uh, there's a little screen right there. Just want to make sure that uh, nothing's touching, uh, that the wheel's not rusted. Of course, it's made out of aluminum, so looks like we're not going to have any issues. It does have a little bit of wobble. I see that. Yep. So, so we could definitely have an issue with this inducer assembly. And you can see, it looks like it's been hitting a little bit. There's a few scratches right here, so we might have to replace this inducer assembly. Let's go ahead and take this screen out here. Go ahead and clean that screen. Make sure that uh, if the equipment's old and it needs maintenance that you're checking everything. Uh, we've replaced quite a bit of parts on this equipment just to keep it going over the few years, like that pulley and then that adjustable sheave. Let's see, let's check everything out. This is our incoming power. We got three legs, it's three phase. Uh, we should check from each leg to make sure that we have all of our legs of power coming in. We've got two contactors for the compressor. Uh, we've got a gigantic transformer here. We've got our board. This is our ignition control board, it looks like. And this is our main control board. So. Uh, all of our pressure switches and everything come to this board. This one right here manages the ignition and the heating side. So one for all the main functions, the cooling, one for the ignition control, the heating. So just in case you didn't know that, we got a relay here. Looks like this is the relay for our um, outdoor fan motor. And then we've got two capacitors for our outdoor fan motors. We've got two fans new hot surface igniter in there looking good we got our gas valve inducer motor 
inducer motor pulls the flames through the heat exchanger and we've got our meter set to voltage can you go ahead and put the leads in in the hot service igniter and measure the voltage real quick oh you do oh, okay don't do that my leads aren't like yours they're not super skinny super skinny Make sure you get some super skinny leads, guys. You can't stick those in there on the back side. That's gonna make contact. Oh yeah. There we go. It's lit. Yeah, it's lit. Let me check both. Just go ahead and stick it in there. You have got. Yeah, I can't get it in there all the way. Hold on, you almost got it. You got it in there. Here. Nope. It's not making contact though. Yeah, it's not making contact. Yeah, you're right. But it's lit now? Should be. Oh yeah, we got lots of heat now. Definitely need to take that inducer motor apart though, man. Sounds really bad. Guys, what you need to know about this is you need to make sure that you're careful with the hot surface igniter. Usually hot surface igniters have either 80 volts or they have 120 volts. Uh, going to them on commercial equipment, usually it's 120 volts. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull this inducer assembly apart and take a look at the wheel. Indoor blower just kicked on. This is our indoor blower section, and we've got our filters and our indoor motor in there. All right, just turn the disconnect off. Always put your lockout tag out and be safe when you're working with electricity got to make sure that's correct so now we got heat we're back on we're running and I just want to take a moment to show you Corbin's drill because Corbin loves this drill and it actually is a pretty handy little drill Corbin tell me about this impact driver here why do you like this um, I like it just it's small enough to fit in my little walk-up bag what kind of bag do you got here it's a AWP bag Nice AWP bag from Lowe's. There's uh, a few things that uh, Corbin's using on a day-to-day -day basis with this HVAC technician journey that I really think is pretty impressive. Just because he's a new technician, but he's got some really good tools he's working with. Milwaukee Packout. This is something I like that Corbin uses. It's a great little um, organizer for uh, wire nuts. Uh, so the drill. What's it called? Milwaukee fuel. Uh, yeah, that's their M12 line, their 12 volt. Uh, I like it, like I said, because it fit in my small tool bag. That way I don't have to have a whole lot of weight. Uh, yeah. If I want to clip it on my belt, I can. Um, also, oh. the variable speed on the top. Okay, it's variable speed. Yeah. What? Uh, you got the uh, selector for one, two, the, the drill one is for self tap screws. Yeah. Where it'll, it'll spin up at the full RPM uh, at the third setting, and then it will slow down once the uh, self tap screw has penetrated the metal. Cool. And that way you're not stripping out your threads. And this right here, this pack out, uh, you said there was something you could do with these. You can get like more than one, I guess. You could stack them. They stack together or they yes. slide together. Is this right here how they slide together, these yeah, little they, slides, these hooks? They'll slide in, and that's the locking point. There's the little release right there. You'll basically just sit it on it and just slide it forward, and it locks in place. You just pick up on that release and slide it off. Once cool. You, uh, man, you got some cool tools. You got a cool bag. I like it, man. AWP. Guys, if you like these tools, go check them out. Links in the description for the Milwaukee Fuel Brushless Drill. Uh, the Milwaukee pack out and then the AWP bag. Uh, it's all in the link in the description. Go check that out. If you're a technician, you're entering the field, you don't know what drill to get, you don't know what organizer to get, or you don't know what tool bag. Uh, let's put it back together. Let's get out of here. Wow, that was like effortless. Unbelievable. Can you put one screw, one more screw in for me, Corbin? Uh, yeah, right there. Just put one more screw in. Let the people see the Milwaukee. That's only on the, the second speed. Yeah, Whoa! <laughs> it's amazing. Like second it. speed. 
Yeah. Here, let's throw it off the roof. See what happens. I'd rather not. Oh, uh, unless okay. Unless Milwaukee wants to send me a brand new one, and I will throw this one off the roof and <laughs> torture test it. Torture test, yes. Is that the number one reason you like it? Absolutely. Just slip it on. Slip, slip it, it on in your my pants. pocket. Slip it in your pocket. Be very careful when you are working with this type of equipment. I had to use it for myself, guys. If you'll buy me a new one. Okay, deal. I know this is what my viewers have always wanted to watch me put some screws in. I'll make sure I put a hole in the coil. Not. Alright, we're on speed number three now. No longer we are going to choose the number two. Look at that. Look at that. That's amazing. I mean, look at that screw go in there. Would you just look at it? Would you look at it? You like looking at it. I know you do. Alright guys. Hey, this is Tab with Tips for Technicians. Reminding you, I'll keep you cool if you let me. <laughs>